Hello again, it's Tim Spector of the Zoe COVID study giving you this week's update. And it doesn't get easier, does it? The whole position just gets more complex and confusing with twists and turns and COVID's definitely going to be with us for a while. And today we're going to be covering what's going on with the cases, what are the trends, and we're going to be focusing on schools and uh, what's happening in children. Also going to be looking at underlying those cases, which uh, are likelihood of long COVID, hospitalizations and deaths with vaccines. Thirdly, we're going to be looking at the international scene, work out in a way why the UK is still uh, heading those charts. And then we're going to be looking at a more depth, in-depth look at the waning of vaccines and how that might affect you. And finally, I'll give you our top five symptoms of the week for those of you that have been fully vaccinated. And whilst we still await the government's recognition of this. So let's get started. According to your data, 52,000 new cases of COVID are likely uh, per day across the UK. That's an increase of a few thousand from last week and gives us an R value of 1.1, showing that trend is slowly upwards. And those numbers are uh, pretty high and getting back towards uh, where the peak of this wave was. About 15,000 of those figures are fully vaccinated, like most of you, which is nearly 30% of the sample. And that number is increasing. And in comparison to the government confirmed cases, we can see that we're always a little bit higher uh, as to be expected, but uh, the trends are on target. And remember that we are the only survey that gives you incident, that's new case data. And so we're always ahead of the curve. Let's talk about who's getting COVID and I wanna focus on some of these age groups that we haven't talked about in a while, particularly young people. So uh, a lot of this was driven by the age 20 to 40 year olds, but that effect now is less and we are seeing increases again in uh, younger children, uh, school age children across the UK. These rates are going up and particularly in Scotland where it looks like uh, things are taking off there and the R value in Scotland is 1.2 in general and we're seeing big increases in the younger kids there and that is likely to be related to the fact that they've been back at school for nearly two weeks now and had time for those figures to build up and this is interesting because you'll probably remember that this time last year Scotland again showed that first peak of cases uh, due to school kids and the families and mixing uh, that had been absent during the holidays so I think this bodes uh, rather badly for the rest of the UK as uh, children return to school and we can expect this to be driving increased numbers of cases but hopefully uh, still milder ones uh, particularly uh, in the younger age groups we'll have to see on that one now this is the general picture across the country if you look at this map uh, we do see high levels of covid all over the place really Hard to pick out any, any great patterns, but obviously we've mentioned Scotland, Wales coming back into the picture, having had a, a really good uh, time recently. Northern Ireland uh, looking to have a bad time. Northern England, the Midlands, and the Southwest, and in particular Cornwall, where they've had some music festivals that are probably driving numbers of cases up, as well as lots of tourists. And then the Southeast and, and bits of London. Uh, as you would expect. Moving to the consequences really of, of, of COVID, which is not just the number of new cases, which in many cases may be mild, particularly if you've had a vaccine, but it's what that can lead to. And the three things we're concerned about are long COVID, 
hospitalization and going to ICU, and finally death. And if we look at the uh, data on this, we can see that uh, the predicted incidence of long COVID in this wave is uh, still lower than compared to the second wave. And so uh, despite this uh, lower percentage of cases going to long COVID, we're still seeing 870 people a day going on to our long COVID list, which is going to be a real burden. And this also affects young and older alike. And this is going to have a, a, a drain on the economy. People won't be able to work and on the NHS. And I think we have to get this back into public consciousness again that just having a cold is okay for most people, but if you're in that one to 4%, it's not. Hospital admissions have uh, uh, decreased compared to the previous wave by about two and a half fold, uh, but they are unfortunately still rising and hospitals are getting pretty full. Deaths are where we see the biggest change uh, since the last wave, which is generally good news. Um, but the not so good news is that we've climbed to 100 deaths a day, which we haven't seen those figures since March. And uh, that's a very high cost of freedom for uh, the most of us are enjoying, particularly if that's going to keep rising. Um, I'd love to say why the death rate's going up. Uh, it's unclear at the moment, and unfortunately the government and public health England aren't providing any data on the people that are dying to know whether it's due to other illnesses, uh, whether they've all been vaccinated or not, or the exact circumstance. So that would be great. Uh, it would help scientists like us unravel this picture a bit faster. So now let's look at the international scene and how the UK is doing on those global rankings. And you can see from this uh, graph that the UK is still near the top of the world and the Europe as well. Uh, having been knocked off top slot a couple of weeks ago, we're back on top because Spain and France, which had briefly overtaken us, have now uh, dropped cases quite rapidly. And it's interesting in those two countries, they have lower vaccination rates than we do in the, in the UK, but they haven't eased all their restrictions. They still have mask wearing in public places, shops, and they have some curfews and have kept a lot of their nightclubs, etc., closed. Uh, could be a coincidence, or maybe uh, these things do have a, an impact. Now, Israel's also interesting to look at because they're the only country that are ahead of us in the vaccination game. And there we are seeing rates of actual cases skyrocketing. And um, this is despite most of the country having been vaccinated due to their vaccines wearing off. Now, obviously, hospitalizations are a, a, a guide that some people think are better between countries. And we can see the US is leading uh, the world on, on this because many people are getting severe COVID there because of very patchy vaccination rates between the different states. But again, for us in the UK, what's worrying is what's going on in Israel with very high hospitalization rates. And Many people argue that it's very hard to compare these international um, rates because people collect the data very differently. And there's, it's always been level that the UK is abnormal because we just test more people than anywhere else in the world. And actually that's true. Uh, I'm unsure why we got in that, that situation, but it's very hard for any politician to say, let's test less, but it, it's, two or threefold more than most of our other European countries. And on that basis, it's possible the rates are slightly inflated. But when you look at the number of uh, tests you need to get a positive case, which is like the relative amounts, you can see the UK is still fairly average in terms of uh, Europe for that. So I don't think that's causing these uh, trends, although you sometimes have to uh, 
read into countries that don't do much testing the fact they are likely to be underestimates. Now, why is the UK performing so badly, I think is the question that a lot of people are asking. And this is despite us uh, having had lots of restrictions in the past, high vaccination rates over 75%. And I think it's it's got to be one of three things. It's got to be the um, lack of restrictions in terms of uh, social distancing, etc. And the fact that everything's open. Um, mask wearing really isn't commonplace. And I know people are calling to question whether uh, this has an effect, but um, we have to assume it has a small effect. And that could be one reason. And the other one is that we vaccinated early and this effect was which bought us some time is actually waning now and uh, that's something we're going to take a deeper dive into. Now last week I shared with you our really fresh data on uh, vaccine waning effects and we had a press release out uh, this week and shared it with with others in more detail because we always want to give you uh, who provide us with the data the very first look at it as it comes back. We're not waiting months for all the approvals. So bear with us on that. It sometimes is a bit fresh. But if you look at the graph now, just in a bit more detail, you can see how the effect is really good in the first month for both Pfizer and uh, AstraZeneca that uh, rates start off higher in the, in the Pfizer one. Uh, but if anything, start to wane perhaps slightly faster, whereas AstraZeneca rates are slightly lower to begin with in terms of protection, but don't seem to fade as fast. But I think the worrying thing here is that if we're seeing uh, current rates of four to five months of between uh, 65 and uh, 70%, if we extrapolate that out, uh, towards the end of the year, we could be seeing 50% uh, protective effects. And interesting to see if Pfizer continues to uh, accelerate and, and those uh, effects wear off before the AstraZeneca one. Um, we really don't know yet, but that's another reason for you to keep uh, logging your symptoms and PCR tests with us uh, so we, we really find out. Now, we presented this to the government and I think they are actively looking at doing booster shots now. Uh, they're going to start, I think, with the immunocompromised people. But what's clear is this can't be run out as just like the first vaccine uh, shots because many people will not need it. They will still have antibodies or they might just have had, recently had an infection which we think uh, will act as like a, a booster anyway. So it's going to be much more complicated. So uh, I think knowing what your status is, whether you've had antibodies or not, and exactly whether you had uh, COVID as well as the vaccine, is going to help decide what priority you get uh, for getting a booster. Now, the other thing we're still looking at is whether this waning effect of the vaccines has an effect on severity or uh, long COVID, for example. And we should be able to give you those results within a couple of weeks and we'll keep you posted, as well as knowing whether if you've had natural COVID as well, uh, the numbers of cases, we get the feeling it's quite rare. So hopefully those people will be protected. So finally, on to symptoms. And our advice as always is be aware and an expert on symptoms. Anything cold-like or flu-like at the moment, with other, other viruses very rare, is highly likely to be COVID. And we are the only uh, app tracking symptoms at the moment. And so your data is absolutely vital to this. And it's still a real pity that the government have not changed their guidelines at all, except good old Guernsey. So keep putting pressure on them to change it because um, if someone, uh, coughs in your face says, don't worry, uh, I've been double vaxxed. You can now tell them absolutely you should worry and you shouldn't do that because 
sneezing and cold-like symptoms are a reality and many people have them. So our, late, our top symptoms for the last uh, week, uh, which are pretty similar to the last 30 days, are, as you can see here, runny nose is still the top one, followed by headaches, sneezing, sore throat, and the only one of the classic uh, ones in there is loss of smell, and that's still 50% of people with those. So try and bear those in mind when you're talking to people, educating them until the government gets around to uh, up, updating their advice. Um, so in summary, COVID is still with us, rates are still rising, we're in for a, a few bad weeks with schools going back, but uh, do take all the precautions uh, that you need to. Hopefully it's going to be a milder disease for most people. And do continue to log daily. Your, vit your data is absolutely vital to us. Thank you for uh, participating. Click on all the notifications, etc. Stay safe. Keep logging. Thanks for your support.